want to talk to you about older men and younger women. David, your socks are wrong side out. <laughs> One of those days. They match, though. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. You want to talk about what? Older men and younger women. What do you think about it? I, it depends on the individual. If two people, you know, if, if you're 60, you which like you're not. Do you like younger women? What? Do you like younger women? I like all women. Women. <laughs> he likes women. Okay, on Monday uh, during this hour, we'll have another face-off debate. Our guests will be Frank Mankiewicz and Victor Gold, and they'll confront the issue of whether the investigation into President Kennedy's assassination should be reopened. Also, we'll have a Jonathan Winters and Miss Rona. For those of you who are staying with us, we've got more things coming up. And if you're leaving us now, make it a good day. Let the great performers entertain you. Singer Randy Williams, impressionist Marilyn Michaels, magician Mark Wilson, comedian Norm Crosby, and the world-famous Chinese acrobats of Taiwan. All on Saturday Night Live with Howard Cosell. Tomorrow at 8, 7 Central on ABC. This week, TV Guide examines the chemistry of one of this season's hit shows, Starsky and Hutch, the cover story in TV Guide. Watching your budget? Cheer up leftovers with clean peaches. Layer cooked broccoli, sliced turkey, and drained clean peach slices in a casserole. Spoon over hot white sauce mixed with a little Parmesan cheese, and serve. Try it with any leftover meats or vegetables. It looks terrific, <laughs> and it doesn't taste like a budget at all. Available at Fazio's. Discover the difference of everyday low prices throughout the store. Get into the spirit, get into all that's new, get into the Wild West stores, bring out the West in you. Californians live an active lifestyle which demands a certain kind of clothing. That's the kind of clothing we sell at the Wild West store. The California spirit, Wild West store. In Torrance, City of Orange, Mission Viejo, and Artesia. Russell and Russell and Natalie Wood today at 3.30. From New York, Hollywood, the nation, Washington and the world. Good morning, America. Good morning. I'm David Hartman here with Nancy Dassault. Welcome to Good Morning America. It's Friday, November the 14th. That's right. Good morning. In this half hour, Rona Barrett will have her report from Hollywood, and Christine Lunn is going to file her second report uh, from Los Angeles on protection against burglary. On Talkback, we've asked uh, some of you about your scariest experiences. The time is now uh, one minute past the hour. Time to go to Washington for the news with Steve Bell and Margaret Osmer. Good morning, Steve and Margaret. Good morning, David. One area of an American president's activities which usually gets less attention but is becoming more and more important is his role in international economic affairs. The president's weekend trip to France provides one example. At Chateau Rambouillet outside Paris, Mr. Ford will take part in an economic summit with five heads of government, the leaders of France, Britain, Italy, West Germany, and Japan. The ostensible purpose of the summit is to coordinate fiscal and monetary policies. But underlying that are European complaints about United States economic leadership. Many of the leaders want Washington to do more to end the recession, a recession that has lingered far longer in Europe than it has here. Steve? Margaret, several European leaders have worried publicly about Washington's cold shoulder treatment of New York City. But in the past 10 days, the administration has signaled a possible change. New Secretary Ron Nesson even hinting that President Ford might approve what was called stopgap aid to New York City. New York's Governor Hugh Carey will be in Washington today to discuss such a plan. The President's also playing a key role in the energy uh, discussions currently going on, a bill now before the Congress. Just how key a rule was spelled out at a White House meeting last night, a report from Ann Compton. Well, Hill came more than 20 Republicans, many of them worried that the President's energy advisor, Frank Zarb, had already talked Mr. Ford into signing the compromise that Zarb had negotiated with the Democrats. The Republicans found they were not too late. In fact, President Ford agreed with them that the complex bill is too confusing. He promised he would make no decision until the bill is printed, and that may not be until late next week. Delays in energy decisions have become routine here in Washington, but in this case, a time factor is involved. 
Saturday at midnight, the current ceiling prices on oil elapse, allowing those prices to soar. To avoid that, the president said he would not object to yet another 30-day extension of controls. It all means that once again, the creation of the nation's first comprehensive energy policy is postponed while many voices continue to argue the question. And Compton ABC News, the White House. The process of selecting a successor to Justice William Douglas is well underway. The president has sent a list of names to the American Bar Association. And ABC's Herb Capital reports the candidate Mr. Ford wants is someone with a conservative judicial philosophy and someone with a legal record respected by the profession. As far, far as the retiring Justice Douglas is concerned, he spent his first day of retirement pretty much as usual. ABC's David Garcia reports. It was a difficult decision, but Justice Douglas is happy now that it's done. On his first day of retirement, Douglas was up early for his usual therapy and some work at the court. Outside his Washington home, Justice Douglas spoke of how he wants to be remembered. Well, I would hope to be remembered as uh, someone who made the earth a little more beautiful than it was when he came. Why is it that you decided to resign at this time? I didn't resign, I just retired. Why did you decide to retire, sir? Because the pain was, was too great. Have you given any thought to the, the kind of successor that you'd like to see uh, on the court? That's none of my business. Would you perhaps like to see a woman? I, I have no prejudice against women. Justice Douglas plans to stay here in Washington and devote his time to writing, perhaps memoirs of his 36 years on the bench, the longest career of any justice of the Supreme Court. Douglas's wife, Kathy, talked with us about what she feels are Douglas's greatest contributions to American law. Uh, things that mean a great deal to him, I think, are his opinions are involving the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of press. Um, I believe he's of the opinion that if a nation has the ability to speak and think freely, they can, they can solve their problems and dissent is permitted. And I think he feels that that's probably the cornerstone of uh, the Constitution and the cornerstone of his contribution to American life. David Garcia, ABC News, Washington. The prosecution will rest its case today in the trial of Lynette Squeaky Fromm. The defense, in turn, will begin its presentation by playing President Ford's videotaped testimony. On that recording, Mr. Ford tells under oath what he heard and saw when Ms. Fromm pointed a gun at him. In Chicago this morning, doctors are going back to work at Cook County Hospital. The doctors accepted a new contract last night to end the nation's longest doctor's strike. The contract settlement, something of a precedent, the doctors agreeing to take only half of their original salary demands and return the other half of the funds to be used to improve patient care. Margaret? Israeli authorities say this morning that six people died in that terrorist explosion on Thursday. About 50 were injured. The bomb went off in Zion Square in downtown Jerusalem during evening shopping hours. It was only 20 yards from where an explosion killed 15 people last July 4th. Radical Palestinians have claimed responsibility. In Madrid, General Franco's doctors claim they've done everything possible, but Franco continues to bleed internally. He's being kept alive at the moment by a respiratory and kidney machine. Another crisis has come and gone in Lisbon, but without any long-term solution of the government's chronic economic problems. After surrounding Premier Azevedo's residence for 36 hours, film based on a very serious play about a very serious subject, mental institutions. Ms. Rona? Good morning, Nancy, and greetings, everyone. I'd like to go on record right at the start, predicting that One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest from United Artists and Fantasy Films will be one of the five films nominated for Best Picture this year. Beyond a doubt in my mind, it'll bring a fifth Best Actor nomination to Jack Nicholson, who once again proves he's one of the finest actors in motion picture history. Jack portrays Randall Patrick McMurphy, who pretends to be insane and deliberately has himself transferred from a prison work farm to a state mental hospital. His is a classic performance. From the laughter he invokes throughout the tale,
tale to the tears that emerge at film's end. He's magnificently assisted by a cast that won't soon be forgotten. Some of them actual mental patients from the Oregon State Mental Home. Others, of course, professional actors. For Louise Fletcher and Ellen Burstyn Lookalike, a sure Best Actress nomination as the bad, life-denying establishment bogey woman, Big Nurse Ratched. Not only does Cuckoo grip the viewer, but you'd like to grip her around the throat. Also look for a Best Supporting nomination for Brad Dorif. His Billy Babbitt is brilliant and beautiful as the boy whose mother has carefully reduced him to a stuttering sham of a man. There is also another possible supporting nomination for Will Sampson as six foot six inch Chief Bromden, teacher and lecturer, who makes his acting debut as a huge, supposedly deaf and dumb Indian who has a real surprise for you. A premature but predictable Oscar nomination too for Czechoslovakian director Milos Foreman, who made it all happen. Since it first appeared in 1962, Ken Kesey's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest has been a consistent bestseller on the top list for over more than 250 weeks. While film rights were first owned by Kirk Douglas, son Michael now takes credit as co-producer and the man who saw the project through to completion. Jack Nicholson and Cuckoo are modern movie marvels. Through sheer goal and ingenuity, Nicholson takes over the ward of this unhappy institution and turns it and its inhabitants into something wonderful. You laugh 99% of the time with them, but you're forced to think full-time about them. That's when it hits you, when you realize that the crazies on the inside are nothing compared to the people in control of the hospital. It's a parable for today's times. Who were the sane and who were the sick? The incompetents are out there in many fields. The thought is chilling, as is one flew over the cuckoo's nest. The film is rated R, so don't bring the kids. Also, don't see it on an evening with a full moon, or you just may realize that we all have our own personal cuckoo's nest. Until next time, keep thinking good thoughts. This is Rona Barrett in Hollywood. Thank you, Rona. Sounds like a great film. Still to come in this uh, section of Good Morning America, our talkback cameraman asked what scared you the most, and Christine Lund's feature on the way to keep burglars out of your house. We'll be back. <laughs> Home for the Blind is urgently needed. Please send your contribution to the Jewish Blind of California, 509 South Beverly Bluff, Beverly Hills. At Alfie's Restaurants, we're serving two eggs any way you want them. Your choice of bacon, ham, or sausage, and hot biscuits for 99 cents. 99 cents at Alfie's. Clean up with the Eureka Model 1418. Powerful suction and beater bar brush action cleans and grooms your carpets. Gets the deep down dirt from even the heaviest shag. Eureka! Six position dial and app plus edge cleaners and king size dust bag. Optional cleaning attachments available. Clean up now with Eureka! Now only $69.95. Save $10 on this Eureka vacuum cleaner at all Harris Company stores. Pears are something you can really get your teeth into. Remember when cleaning your silver meant hours of hard work, rubbing and scrubbing until your hands were raw? Well, ladies, those days are gone forever. Now there's an amazing product called Tarnex that foams away tarnish from sterling, silver plate, copper, gold, even platinum and diamonds. Watch how easy it is to clean this badly tarnished spoon. Just dip, no rubbing, no buffing. Isn't that amazing? You know how hard it is to clean deep crevices and intricate patterns. Just wipe on Tarnex. Even deeply embedded tarnish rinses away like magic. Did you ever see a copper cleaner that works this easy? Tarnex will save you hours in the kitchen. This bottle contains more Tarnex than you'll probably use at home in a year, yet it costs only $3. And it's guaranteed to work for you at home as quickly and easily as it does here on TV. Or return it to place of purchase for your money back. Get Tarnex, the amazing tarnish remover that rinses away tarnish like magic. Available exclusively at all your nearby thrifty drug and discount stores. It's now 15 minutes past the hour. You know, the chances of your house or apartment being a, a target for burglars are better than one in 50. Uh, yesterday, in the first of two reports, we had some tips on locks for doors. 
Uh, but burglars can get through the windows, too. And this morning, Christine Lund has some more useful advice on how to keep from being robbed. And if it should happen to you, uh, these are some things that you can do to help solve the crime and get back your property. So from KB KABC in Los Angeles, here is Christine Lund and part two of her war on burglary. Thank you, David. As we mentioned yesterday, burglars make off with nearly a billion dollars every year in this country, and we make it so easy for them. But if we all toughen up our homes and apartments, the burglars won't take the risk. And you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on it either. You may think that windows are hopeless, but you're wrong. The burglar's deathly afraid of noise. Chances are he won't risk breaking glass and is not going to use a glass cutting tool. That's a myth created by Hollywood that just does not work out in real life. But he will go after a latch like this, a little muscle, and it can be forced without very much noise. So drill a hole again through the inner frame and halfway through the outer frame. Then insert a pin like this one, or just a carpenter's nail. They're equally as good. It'll only cost a few cents, and there's not a human being can budget. It's part of your first line of defense against burglars. And with wing windows that swing open, screw some metal brackets in at the top and at the bottom. They can still be opened normally, but when you go away, just drop in a simple screw or nail into the hole you've drilled, and the window cannot be forced. Many people have metal or wooden rods inside their windows or sliding glass doors. They're good, but not alone. They're no substitute for the metal pins, believe me. Wrought iron bars like this one will keep the burglar out, of course, but here's why bars are such a terrible idea. They can trap you inside, and the fire department is strongly against them. Now, here's one of the best investments you can make. A good, noisy dog who doesn't like strangers. Not a biter, just a good, noisy one. And one person who really should know verifies that. Don't get burglar alarms. Don't get bars on their windows. Get themselves a dog. This doggy door seems innocent enough. But two people I know lost $4,000 just like this. And this is one of the doors where it actually happened, by the way. If the burglar can't get through himself, he may just send a child in for him. And if you have a good noisy dog, don't worry. But otherwise, seal that door up with heavy bolts that can't be touched from the outside. Or better yet, get a new door. Shrubbery can be made to order camouflage for a burglar. He could work behind a single, good-sized bush near a door or window like this one for half an hour or more and never even worry about being noticed. So make a check and do some trimming around the house. A burglar can't work exposed, so lighting is his worst enemy. In the energy crisis, people got rid of a lot of lights, but a good 40-watt bulb is great protection for only a couple of dollars a year. But let's say that the worst has happened. The burglar's gotten into your home. Lock your valuables in a sturdy closet with a deadbolt lock. And get a $6 marking pen. Mark every last valuable you have with your driver's license number. Coupled with a warning like this, it can deter a burglar and help put you back in touch with your goods if they are stolen. And then keep a list of your valuables with those serial numbers and keep it in a good, safe place. But again, say the very worst has happened. The burglar's gotten into your home. If you even suspect there's a burglar inside, there's only one thing you should do. Don't play hero. This is where burglaries turn into rapes, assaults, and even murders. Go next door and call the police. And when you go on vacation, don't let newspapers and other deliveries pile up. That just shouts to the burglar, you're not home. Have delivery stop till you get back. And please, don't leave notes like this. You're not talking to the milkman nearly as much as you are to some burglar. And drapes, don't make the house look shut up like this. Leave it looking lived in. And ask your neighbors to keep an occasional eye on your house. It's an important favor that you can easily repay when they go away. And here's another problem you can solve by trading off with your neighbor. It's quite obvious that no one's been around to mow this lawn for quite some time. Let's take a look at some of the main points again. One-inch deadbolt locks on all outside doors. And double-cylinder deadbolt locks on glass doors. It takes a key on both sides. Simple but effective pins in all windows. And in those sliding glass doors, screws or pins to keep them from being jimmied. Padlocks on both sides of the garage doors, the double-notched kind. And don't leave any exposed screws or bolts. And leave your home looking lived in. 
and more than anything else, get together with the people on your block. Cooperate with police in a neighborhood watch program. As we've been saying, the one big thing that lets the burglar keep ripping us off is complacency. Uh, if our citizens would implement these particular methods of deterrence, the burglar wouldn't have a chance. He really wouldn't. He'd have to go someplace else. He'd have to uh, go out and make a, make a living for himself. Let's help one another. Let's do something to, to let's get mad. Let's, let's stop it. Really get mad. Too many people wait until after they're robbed before they worry about burglars. I was burglarized once, and I can tell you it's a feeling worth avoiding. Now, if you have any kind of questions at all, call the local police department, and this booklet describes everything that we've been telling you this week. Just write to Crime Prevention, Los Angeles Police Department, Los Angeles, 90012. Again, that's Crime Prevention, Los Angeles Police Department, Los Angeles, 90012. And let's all start doing these things we're recommending. Mm. That is superb advice, and yeah. I'm going to do exactly as she advised. Yeah, me too. I, I, I certainly would want to walk in and find a burglar in my house. It would be so scary. Yes, it would. Uh, on Talk Back, we asked just about that sort of thing. The question was, what was the scariest experience of your life? I haven't had it yet. I remember it was small, we had the missiles pointing at us. I was young then, I was really afraid, and I kept crying. The scariest experience I had? I was driving on the Grand Central one time and somebody shot at me. I was scared. I went on the medium slope and it kept going up and up and up for about 20 minutes. And uh, when I got up to the top, I realized I couldn't get down. So I knew I was going to break a leg, and I did. We were going up a mountain, and I was very adventurous in a, in a rented car, and it got too steep, <laughs> and we had to back down. That was pretty scary. When I saw Jaws. Facing death. City of New York. Ow. City of New York. No. Are you, are you frightened here? No. I'm are you? Either. No, not at all. We talked about that a long time ago. Of course, I walk around like this <laughs> on the street. No, but, there's, no, but that, that's partially, I think, a great myth. There's both, there are 8 million people here who work here, 14 million mm -hmm. work here every day. Not a bad place at I'll all. I'll take care of you. Yeah. It's um, 22 and a half minutes past the hour. In the next half hour, we'll have Jonathan Winters on Family Living. We'll be showing you uh, some of the offbeat new products you can buy. And our guests will be two giants from the world of comics. Bob Clampett, who helped create Bugs Bunny and Stan Lee, who invented Spider-Man. So <laughs> stay with us. We'll be back right after these words. Yeah. Hi, I'm Marshall Brodeen. You know, most magic tricks are easy once you know the secret. Like this one, stuff any handkerchief in your hand. And with the magic vanisher, presto, you made it disappear. Now take this empty tube. Drop the glass through to convince everyone that it's really empty. Pour some water into the tube. But look, it doesn't go through. Cover it with any handkerchief. Push it through with a pencil. And what happened to the water? Here it is, back inside the glass. Those are just some of the 15 tricks you will find in this TV magic set. Yes, now you can put on your own TV magic show and have hours of fun entertaining your friends. The TV magic set comes with all the equipment and instructions for 15 tricks, plus a complete deck of cards and instructions for 25 card tricks, and a book of 102 other magic tricks you can learn to do. Yet TV magic sets only $4.99, available at all thrifty drug and discount stores. Hey, Herb, look at all the pesticides I bought on sale. Oh, that? For one tomato plant? I'll keep the leftovers for next year. That's asking for trouble. You should buy only the pesticide you need now. But it takes a lot to kill a four-inch hornworm. Not really. Angostura Aromatic Bitters. It even makes the rocks taste better. From their mousse to champagne cocktails, Angostura is the important flavor turn-on. It adds the professional touch to today's lighter drinks. When you pour over the rocks, remember the flavor maker, Angostura. Angostura Aromatic Bitters. All of these promise growth. This one guarantees it. Lady, a novel of secret loves and shattered dreams by Tom Tryon, author of The Other. Lady, the new Fawcett paperback bestseller. 
Good morning. It's 64 degrees and partly cloudy in Los Angeles. I'm Steve Lentz, and this is the 825 edition of the news. Police in South Los Angeles are trying to find the driver of a hit-and-run car which killed a six-year-old girl last night. Little Tammy Sanders was crossing 39th Street about 7 o'clock to buy some ice cream when she was hit by an eastbound car. The speeding vehicle fled the scene, and the girl died a short time later in West Adams Hospital. The FBI has a man behind bars this morning who's been the subject of a recent global manhunt. He's 39-year-old Richard Keats, and authorities say he's the man who masterminded a scheme to steal three and one-half million dollars in municipal checks from Los Angeles. Keats was picked up by immigration agents in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and he'll be transported to the United States mainland in a few days. Actress Joanne Worley went out on the town last night, but when she arrived back at her Toluca Lake home, it turned out to be a more expensive evening than she had planned. Burglars had broken into the home, stealing jewelry, cameras, and a mink coat to the tune of $4,500. An estimated 3,000 persons turned out at a Westwood rally last night to protest the recent United Nations resolution equating Zionism with racism. Mayor Tom Bradley addressed the group and said he was adding his voice of protest and condemnation, joined by millions around the world against that measure. Police report there was one minor incident. Three members of the militant Jewish Defense League were arrested when they got into a scuffle with pro-Arab students. If you lost out in the bidding last summer for that palatial Hollywood estate formerly owned by comedian Harold Lloyd, it looks like you'll get another chance. You may remember a man from Iran and a Beverly Hills realtor paid about one and a half million dollars for the 17-acre estate. Well, the pair put up the home with its 44 rooms, pool, and tennis courts for sale again. There's only one catch. Now they're asking three times what they paid for it. If you've got the money, you should have no problem forking over the more than $40,000 it takes each year to pay the property taxes. Housewives on the east side of the San Francisco Bay are continuing their war against massage parlors by picketing those establishments. One of the parlors in Berkeley is asking for a truce with the ladies by asking them inside for a free rubdown. Seems the Xanadu has a sign in its window which reads, Get your wife rubbed out, as long as she's accompanied by her husband. As you can imagine, the whole thing almost came to some warfare until the owner explained to the ladies, rubbed out means only a free massage. I'll have a look at sports and weather after these messages. Overweight? Try the AIDS reducing plan. AIDS candy contains vitamins and minerals, no drugs, no cyclamates. This delicious tasting candy taken with a hot drink before meals helps you curb your appetite. You eat less because you want less, so you lose weight. In case after case, reports show pounds lost by men and women alike. And once you've reduced, AIDS helps you control your weight. The AIDS reducing plan is proved. Thousands have lost weight on it. Try it. We're going to make you switch for Greg and Jesse's turkeys, Sherry Lynn's stuffing. We're going to make you switch for holiday vegetables, John, and super low prices. For Greg, Evelyn, and pop-up timers. For pure butter-basted turkeys, crisp duck, candied yams, succulent goose. For fruit and nuts and all the trimmings. You're going to switch to Ralph's for super holiday dinners and our super people, too. Happy holidays! In sports, the Kings continued their winning ways at the Forum last night, but it wasn't easy. They had to scramble to come from behind, beating the New York Islanders 4-3. The Lakers invade the Palace of Jack Kent Cook this evening when they host the improved Phoenix Suns. World Team Tennis got a big boost yesterday when Chris Everett ended her resistance to organized league play. Chrissy signed for two years with the Phoenix Rackets to the tune of $160,000 every 12 months. And Chuck Webner, the Bayonne bleeder who challenged Muhammad Ali earlier this year, knocked out someone named Irish Johnny Evans last night. Webner says he's aiming for a rematch with the champ. Irish Johnny, meantime, is going back to tending bar. The weather, Dr. George says, another sunny and warm day for the Southland with a downtown high of 80 degrees and only light smog. In these updates, police in Sherman Oaks at this hour are trying to find out who shot the wife of a music professor. The body of 44-year-old Andrea Granite was found in her Ventura Camden Boulevard residence by her husband on his return from Cal State Northridge. Investigators say they have no suspects or even a lead in that case. A 17-year-old San Fernando youth who swallowed a plastic bag of marijuana when police stopped his car a few days ago has died. At this time, Robert Menendez somehow managed to inhale the bag into his lung. He was rushed to UCLA Med Center where doctors removed the bag, but he stayed in critical condition until his death. That's the news. I'm Steve Lentz. Have a good morning.
This portion of Good Morning America is brought to you by the many fine products of General Foods and by Lip Savers. They're like a lifesaver for your lips. Hi, we're back. This is Good Morning America, and I'm David Hartman. Coming up in this half hour in our family living feature, we'll be looking at and playing with some very unusual new Christmas gifts, possible gifts. <laughs> uh, these toys are for children, and they're also for us grown-up folks. Nancy, what else have we got? Well, we're going to be talking with two very funny men as guests. Bob Clampett, who co the co-creator of Bugs Bunny, and Stan Lee, the inventor of Spider-Man. Is he the uh, one who climbs the wall? You bet. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, it's now uh, 30 and a half minutes past the hour. Let's go to Washington for the news with Steve Bell. Steve? David, the new energy compromise ran into a snag at the White House last night. President Ford saying that he'll not decide to approve or veto that new measure until he sees the final draft. Now, that will take another nine to ten days, and in the meantime, the oil price controls expire. But the president says he will not object to a 30-day extension of controls until all the technicalities can be cleared up. When the Congress and administration finally do work out an energy bill, that will solve only part of the problem. There's still the question of alternative energy sources for the long term. And one alternative that's getting increasing attention is solar energy. In Atlanta, reporter Lou Davis of station WXIA tells us about one project. The solar heating and cooling system will be finished and ready for use next week. Then the entire school building will be heated by the sun on cold days, and the air conditioner will be run by solar energy on hot days. It's all done through these 600 solar collectors on the roof of the building. They absorb energy from sunlight, heating water that runs through the pipes to about 200 degrees. The tanks in the front of the school will store the water, and we can store up enough water and enough energy to last approximately 18 days. More than 25% of the total energy used in the United States is consumed in heating and cooling buildings. Experts here feel that eventual widespread use of these systems will help conserve our oil and gas supplies and could even be an alternative to this winter's predicted natural gas shortage. I, I'm aware of several large plants doing about a million dollars a day in business that will have to shut down if they can't maintain heating for their workers. Then a solar system becomes completely practical, economically and otherwise. This experimental project cost half a million dollars to build, but officials here say that now that the prototype is finished, a commercial firm could install a similar system for about one-third that cost. And then the only expense in heating or cooling the building would be running the water pumps. Lou Davis for ABC News in Atlanta. President Ford will be in Atlanta later today for a news conference and a Republican dinner. Earlier in the day, he's making two speeches in North Carolina. Argentina's President Isabel Perón returned to the presidential residence last night. She had spent the last 11 days in a hospital with a gallbladder attack. The day before her return, thousands of Peronist party members rallied in Buenos Aires calling for her resignation. The Peronist late party, founded by her husband, was the basis of her support. She's managed to stay in office this long, fighting off military pressure, only because the Labor Party stayed with her. Rally speakers said that unless Mrs. Perón goes to the entire, or goes, the entire Peronist movement will deteriorate. I'm Bob Banfield in Los Angeles. The House Intelligence Committee has voted to cite Secretary of State Henry Kissinger for contempt of Congress for refusing to turn over subpoenaed documents on eight covert intelligence operations. The uh, vote was 10 to 2. Now back to Steve Bell in Washington. Basketball action last night, first in the NBA, the New York Knicks broke a five-game losing streak by beating the Houston Rockets 108 to 102. The Washington Bullets stopped the Boston Celtics 110 to 107. The Phoenix Suns got by the Seattle Supersonics 106 to 103, and Golden State beat Chicago by a score of 98-87. Finally, San Antonio clobbered Virginia 124 to 100 in the only ABA contest. Well, there's a new world's record holder today, and the category is one close to all Americans, paper airplanes. Bobby Miner took advantage of a nice windy day in Cheyenne, Wyoming, to launch his paper plane on a 22.4 second flight. Now, Bobby gives all the credit to his plane's specially adapted stabilizers, sloped slides, and flaps. 
Incidentally, David, it's more impressive than you might think when you stop to consider that the Wright brothers' historic first flight lasted only 12 seconds. And that's the news and sports from Washington. Thank you, Steve. It's now 35 minutes past the hour. Next, in Family Living, we're going to look at some gifts that are kind of fun. Also, Jonathan Winters will review the new movie, Smile. And our guests will be the fathers of Bugs Bunny and Spider-Man. Stay right where you are. We'll be back after this word from Sea and Ski Lipstick. You've always been told you get chap lips in the winter and you get dry lips when it's summer. But you can have chap dry lips anytime. Only now you don't have to have them at all. Because there's a lip saver to protect your lips. Lip savers will help you lick dry lips in spearmint, lime, orange mint, and wild cherry flavors. Mmm, it goes on so smooth, and it tastes good. Lip savers. They're like a lifesaver for your lips. Those grown men in those silly suits, one of Australia's biggest tourist attractions. Australia's biggest attraction is me. And who flies those tourists from San Francisco to sightsee me? Qantas. I hate Qantas. You're looking at an antique table finished with verithane. The clear liquid plastic that brings out the deep, rich beauty of any wood surface. And Verithane protects that deep, rich beauty against everything from spills to kids. In fact, Verithane outlasts varnish two to one. And that's beautiful, too. Verithane clear liquid plastic. It's beautiful protection. Sparked earth shade was made for you, meant for you. Flory Roberts Mahogany in eyeliner, mascara, face polish, lipstick, lip polish, nail polish. The Mahogany Collection, a $20 value, only $5 with any $5 Flory Roberts purchase. <laughs> Welcome back. It's, uh, it's almost 38 minutes past the hour. You know, lots of new ideas for gift-giving come out uh, this time of year, every year, and some of them are useful, some of the gifts, and some of them are just fun. Some of them sometimes are both. Well, you can decide for yourself after you see some of these unique <laughs> items that are loaned to us by a couple of stores. Oh! Nancy just dropped her <laughs> gear shift. No! How do you like this? No, I think it's terrific. What is it? What is it? It is a Jeep, and it has a little motor. It's got a real motor. Oh, yeah. It's a little car. It's, mm -hmm. This one is uh, really not a toy. It's a real car. I know it. And uh, it zips like along it? pretty well, and it costs around $500 uh, from FAO Schwartz here I'm in gonna New York. I'm going to take it out on the road today, I think. Pardon? I'm going to try that. I'm going to take it out on the road today. <laughs> Good luck. Yes, I don't gonna... think you're supposed to drive those out on the highway, though. No. Too small. Really? Yes. <laughs> and I have, but I have this new, I have another gadget here. You haven't seen this yet. No. This is for when you go through the uh, toll booths. Mm -hmm. Look at it. You fill What's it with quarters, 24 quarters. Right. And then you, uh, you, and you shoot oh, the so money you don't into the have basket. To yeah. Hunt for change and you don't, don't have, have to throw to the, the quarters in the thing. Do I, I try? I would. Ready? Ready? I'm going to try it. <laughs> a little, Dynamite, a little doggy huh? right in the nose. Don't hit this dog. Come see my favorite. I would like to if you would assist me. Be this delighted. is not as easy as it looks. <laughs> oh, I'll be right with you, folks. Thank you, Miss Grace. <gasps> oh, look. It's our favorite. Here's a Snoopy. <laughs> Can you make him work? Let me see. Snoopy swims. Snoopy paddles with his ears. I don't think and I Snoopy can make blows him water from his mouth. I think he's from tired. FAO Schwartz. <laughs> I'm Snoopy, wonderful with machines. Snoopy though. swims and Snoopy paddles with his ears. Let's look at our radio while Snoopy is trying Go, to get, Snoopy. His, get his act together. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a, a little uh, home radio microphone. It's kind of sing along time with a radio. Uh, this is a real radio. And you can sing uh, into the microphone while a radio is playing, and your voice comes out uh, with the music from the radio. Scooby Dooby Dooby. Or, or, or it's a PA system. Try it. Da -da -da, -da -da -da. Thank you very much. And for our ultimate gift. I haven't finished. <laughs> for our ultimate gift, uh, Neiman Marcus in uh, Dallas offers the, uh, and it's rather expensive, 
a trip to Utah where you can get your own uh, dinosaur bone, uh, guaranteed that you'll get a dinosaur bone, and from that one bone they will reconstruct uh, the rest of the dinosaur, put it in a museum, <laughs> and it will only cost you $30,000 for that. Isn't that's that a fair price. Huh? That's uh, $30,000 for a price. And we have one last little item, a little What's doggy. That? little doggy. Get How over here so we can see it. And you just hike this chain up, <laughs> and he goes. Oh, he's wonderful. Huh? Does mm -hmm. he walk? Here, you take him. Thank you. Can I? Oh, that's just cute toy. Isn't that terrific? That's fun. So those are a little gifts Oh, he's today. walking. Oh, pardon oh. me. Are you trying to continue? No, it's okay, Nancy. Uh, those are our gifts for today, and they're kind of fun, and some are useful, some are not. Uh, you can I'm so happy. Yourself. You know, there's more to a, a beauty contest than meets the eye. The new film, uh, Smile, is a satire on a teenage pageant. Well, Bruce Dern plays the head judge, who's taken a few days off from his used car business. Barbara Feldon is the contest coordinator and coach of the runway. And Jonathan Winters, our critic on the loose, is here to tell us what to look at, in case we don't know. Jonathan? Good morning, America. Well, what kind of a day is it out there in America? I have no way of knowing. I'm not a weatherman. Just a funky little critic. We're going to discuss uh, this morning an exciting picture called Smile. Uh, it's rated PG, stars Bruce Dern and Barbara Feldon, among some other people in it. Quite a few, as a matter of fact. It's an interesting movie, full of fun and, and some great characters uh, strewn throughout the picture. Uh, it's a, a story that takes place up in the northern part of California, Santa Rosa, to be exact. Uh, deals with uh, young girls who are teenagers, who are looking for and striving to be Miss Teenage America. And of course, some of the judges uh, are unusual. Some of the studies there, some of the, the male uh, counterparts here of uh, people 45, uh, 35 who are, hey, what's this? <laughs> oh, boy, look at her. Uh, with a baton going into the air. Huh? Wow. There are a lot of those fellas in the picture. And, uh, there are a lot of uh, cute girls who uh, do a magnificent job of, uh, it, and it's fun. I think a, a number of us that, um, whether we, uh, uh, strive to be, uh, and of course this uh, dismisses the male population entirely, uh, because uh, this is a story of, of young girls who are striving to be Miss Teenage America, and a lot of young girls though, and I think a lot of people for that matter in general, I, uh, contradicting myself uh, a little bit there for a few seconds, but uh, <laughs> I think we can identify with uh, children and teenagers certainly, whether we have teenagers or not, uh, being in this great auditorium, there are auditoriums of course uh, around America, that, to see these people come up and sing, uh, uh, Mary Jo Stefflinger singing, I just want to be seen love again, you can see me never again. We've all seen uh, that little girl somewhere in an auditorium around America, whether it be at night or in the morning. And, Hello, don't you see the TV? And there are people reciting poetry, these young girls uh, striving, as I say, to, to qualify for Miss Teenage America. It's, a, it's an exciting movie. And um, if you can break away from your apartment or house, uh, do so. And, uh, see this picture. It's fun. And remember, even if you don't see it, smile. Well, we don't actually have Bugs Bunny and Spider-Man as guests. We do have the men behind the scenes, the fathers of those cartoon characters, Bob Clampett and Stan Lee. And we'll be talking with Mr. Clampett about Bugs Bunny's 37-year history and with Mr. Lee about uh, Spider-Man's million comic books a month circulation when we come back after this word from one of the many fine products of General Foods, Orange Plus. Good morning, breakfast in bed. I don't deserve this, and I certainly don't deserve this. What? You get fresh-squeezed orange juice, and I don't. You like the leading frozen orange juice. Think it's closest to fresh. This is Orange Plus. Has pulp like fresh. Orange Plus tastes more like fresh than your number one. Mmm. Want to switch? Mmm. Orange Plus. Frozen concentrate for orange breakfast beverage. Orange Plus tastes closer to fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Some fruit and cereal lovers think they know how to have fruit with their cereal. Until the fruit's all gone and there's nothing left but cereal. 
That's why Post puts so many raisins into Post Raisin Bran. Post mixes the whole grain goodness of wheat and bran with so many sweet, chewy raisins, you can get raisins in every spoonful. <laughs> if you can get every spoonful. Post Raisin Bran, the fruit and cereal lover cereal. To a child who doesn't read, the world is a closed book. That's why a nonprofit organization, RIF, Reading is Fundamental, helps get books to children who have no books of their own. Books they can choose themselves, for keeps, to make them want to read. And it works. Please help. Your contribution is tax deductible. Send a check to Riff Incorporated, Box 23444, Washington, D.C. I ever bought an air conditioner. An air conditioner? Not that kind of air conditioner. This kind. New Glade Solid Air Freshener. Conditions the air and gets rid of odors. How do you plug it in? You don't, Herb. It's an air freshener. Glade Solid. See this ventilation system? Works continuously so the air smells fresh and clean. Fits in the window? It's not an air conditioner, air conditioner. It's an air conditioner. Oh, really? New Glade Solid. Eliminates odors and conditions the air. Our guests are Bob Clampett and Stan Lee. Bob was one of the creators of Bugs Bunny, and Stan is the writer, editor, and mad genius behind Spider-Man and a lot of other so-called comic book superheroes. Gentlemen, welcome to Good Morning America. Thank, Thank you, David. You have brightened up our day already. <laughs> well, I'm ready to go. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, when we brought your films to the, to the cutting rooms here at ABC, the whole place fell apart. The film editors, they're all adults, and they came running in. Several wanted your autographs. Now, why is it, gentlemen, that adults should send the entire film editing operation into chaos? Adults seeing your cartoon. Why? What we, we actually wrote our cartoons for adults. You did? Yeah. Why? Well, we figured that the kids are smarter than adults, so if we wrote it for the adults, everybody would love it, you see? Oh. Actually, the thing about Marvel Comics is they were always planned for the college-age audience, vocabulary-wise, plot-wise, and everything. And uh, as with Bob, not that we thought kids are that much smarter, but we figured that it's possible to appeal to adults without losing the kids. Because comics have a dual appeal. You know, you've got the color, the action, the fantasy for the young kids. Now, if you put in some good storylines and some science fiction angles and mm -hmm. satire and philosophy, then you grab the older reader, and it seems to work. Yeah, that's exciting. Where did Bugs Bunny get his carrot, Bob? Well, actually, it was seeing Clark Gable chew on a carrot <laughs> like this in a movie called It Happened One Night by Frank Capra. And it, upon sight of uh, him doing that, gave the idea, and so we gave the carrot to Bugs Bunny. I wouldn't be surprised, but most of the things that cartoon characters do in all cartoons have been drawn from real life. Is that true? Always. Almost always, yeah. I always thought real life was taken from cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> Stan, Spider-Man, is he the same kind of um, cartoon character as we had, let's say, when I was a kid? Oh, no way. I think the prime difference is, in fact, all of the Marvel characters, and you know we have dozens and dozens. Spider-Man is our leading hero, but we have so many others. But the, the angle is we've tried to change the image of the cardboard character, the one-dimensional hero. Uh, previously, all comic book heroes were all good. They never did anything wrong at the end of the story. They had conquered the villain, and they went off into the sunset. And the villains were all bad. Well, our heroes are less than perfect. They worry about allergy attacks, about dandruff, their socks fall down. You know, anything can happen to them. And even our villains have some lovable traits. So th the main idea is to, to try to present these nutty fairy tale type of characters the way they might be if they lived in the real world, you see. Where'd Bugs Bunny change? Has he changed from the beginning? Just like all growing boys, Bugs changes, yes. Uh, actually... When uh, did he start? When did you do it? Well, the very first uh, Little Bugs Bunny cartoon was uh, in 1938, early in 38. Yeah. In 1940, the film that you just saw is the scene in which, uh, the picture in which he first said, What's up, Doc? And uh, that will be part of our uh, new movie, uh, Bugs Bunny Superstar, which o is opening around the country. And when's that open? It opens in uh, Los Angeles uh, the 21st, which is next Friday, a week from today, and in New York on Christmas Day. Now, Bugs, uh, how many of those did you make over the years? Well, and when did you stop? 
the, actually, uh, the filming on the Bugs Bunny stopped in uh, 1962, but uh, there's always been new, new things done. For example, uh, I, I recently was in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and just as a joke, I suggested to the Pittsburgh Pirates, instead of having that square-looking guy in the pirate hat, what you ought to have is Yosemite Sam with his pirate hat and his scabbard, you see, right. his, <laughs> his cutlass. And, you know, they called back and they said, hey, that's a pretty good idea. And so now they've made arrangements with uh, Warner Brothers uh, to do that, and I'm going to be animating their billboards, you know, Yosemite Sam on the oh, electronic that's billboard. Great. So, the so the characters never stop, you see. How many stories have you written, Stan, in your lifetime, do you okay. think? Okay, I think I've probably written more stories that have been published than anybody who's ever lived, you know. For a period of over 30 years, I never wrote less than two complete comic books a week. In fact, I'm waiting for the Guinness Book of Records to discover <laughs> me. <laughs> Is there a serious side to these books and films? I mean, a really oh, surely. serious side? Are you trying to communicate values? Well, the big thing is, uh, speaking for the books at any rate, basically they're entertainment. And you can't really entertain people, whether it's children or older readers, without making them think, without giving them some values, some philosophical concepts that they can sink mm -hmm. their teeth into. We do it subtly and subliminally because uh, you can't... You can't say to a reader, hey, this is something good for you and it's going to educate yeah. you. But we between the lines. It's in between. We've just got a few seconds. Would you answer one thing that's been bothering me for a long time? Why does Porky Pig stutter? Why does he stutter? Yeah. Well, actually, the, the very first voice man that we had on Porky uh, stuttered. He couldn't help it. And <laughs> uh, may, I, may I also mention that this evening I'm going to be at Northwestern University putting on a big Warner Brothers cartoon show at 7 o'clock. I wish I could be there with you. I wish you could, David. Bob and Stan, thank you thank for you, a delightful Dave. morning. And as Bugs Bunny would say... Yeah, but uh, be, be, that's all, folks. But that's Porky that says that. That's Bugs. Porky? Yeah. Certainly it is. Wish Thank I could you. think of something Spider-Man said. <laughs> Show me Thank your you, Spider-Man underwear stand. For both being with us this morning, we've been talking to Bob Clampett, co-creator of Bugs Bunny and Stan Lee, the creator of Spider-Man and publisher of Marvel comic, Comics. But for the rest of the show, that's not all, folks. In fact, we'll be right back after this word from Melita Coffee Makers. Heaven knows it's not easy being chief cook for the angels. Everything must be clean and pure. Cleanliness is next to goodliness, especially in making coffee. I use Melita filter drip coffee makers. They're designed clean. Nowhere for bitter residue to hide. Easy to keep clean. The filter top goes right in the dishwasher. Electric drips, manuals, a one cup, and pure filter paper. Mm, bless you, Melita. Melita, because cleanliness is next to goodliness. All life is new to your baby. With his senses, he learns about life. To develop, your baby must continue his voyage of discovery through play. By pulling on a Koner Busy Gym, baby can coordinate muscles and eyes. As baby grows, Koner's Busy Box lets him practice motor skills. A face he can love is new Busy Faces with no loose parts and mirrors unbreakable. Teaching your baby is child's play with a Koner Busy Toy and with love. By Gabriel. Some macaroni is made from soft, starchy wheat. This is the special kind of wheat creamettes are made from. Hard, almost like flint. This hard, lean wheat is the reason golden creamettes always cook up firm yet tender. Unlike some macaroni, creamettes never mush up or stick together. Look for the green box. Creamettes, the macaroni made from hard, lean wheat, so it never sticks together. Hi, I'm Les Josephson. It's too bad Big Fella doesn't sell football equipment because when I walk through Big Fella's sportswear stores, I find all the hard-to-get sizes that are so rare in fine sport clothing for big men like my ex-ram teammates. Leisure suits, rows of them like this. Sizes to 66, thousands of slacks, Levi's sport shirts, coats, and accessories, all in taste for you big, tall, or portly guys. If you're big, tall, or portly, Big Fella's your sort of place in Santa Monica, Long Beach, Eagle Rock, Torrance, Downey, Costa Mesa, and West Covina. Monday in this hour, Jonathan Winters, our critic on the loose, Rona Barrett's Hollywood Worldwide, and in our family living feature, Dr. Vivian Tinney will answer some of your medical questions. Also, uh, Geraldo Rivera with a report on early education and three lieutenant governors who happen to be women. 
For some of you, we'll be back. And for those of you leaving us now, make it a good day. Starburst of music and comedy, Donnie and Marie Osmond, with Bob Hope, Paul Lynn, the Osmond Brothers, Kate Smith, and Chip Stats and Johnson's Ice Follies. The Donnie and Marie Osmond Show, something special, Sunday at 7, 6 Central, on ABC. Today on AM Los Angeles, we'll have America's master gardener, Jerry Baker. He's going to teach us how to care for our plants, and Wilhelmina conducts the great model search next.